today we have a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to make some rosé wine out of a Zinfandel blush that I got on Amazon from Fontana. And what I want to do with it is I want to try to make the wine and then keg it and carbonate it so I can have a rosé prosecco, prosecco uh, or champagne on tap. So we'll see if that works. I might bottle some of it too just to try it, but um, we'll see how it goes. But first we're going to actually get the kit, the wine kit that I got on Amazon, open it up here, and it's pretty easy. We're going to put the juice in, add water and yeast, and let it sit, and that's going to be the, the primary stage of it, and then we'll go into clarification after that. Um, so this is just juice. This is Fontana. I opened the, the lid, but I haven't actually taken anything out yet. I've made one other batch of this Fontana before. It was a Pinot Grigio, which turned out really good. Very easy. I recommend it. And it's probably about 70 bucks for this online. This will make five gallons, which is 30 bottles of wine. And of course, before I started everything, I sanitized all surfaces, sanitized all my equipment using my PBW, which is a cleaner and, clear, and uh, sanitizer. And then I always have a running <clears throat> bowl of star sand sanitizer for all my equipment and my hands as I continue to uh, make the wine to the process. I'll put the links for all this stuff um, down below if you're interested, as well as the Fontana wine. You can see this version is the Zinfandel blush. <clears throat> and what we have here is the, the grape juice, packet, we got uh, chitosin, it's a clarifying agent, the yeast, instructions, Piece of salt, another clarifying agent, potassium sorbate, and our benzenate. Day one, step one, primary fermentation. Pour three liters, 12 cups of warm water, tap water, in the bottom of the primary fermenter. Uh, stir an additional pack A bentonite, which I believe is a primary Clarifying agent helps everything drop, all the sediment drop during the initial stage. Um, empty out the contents of the grape juice in the primary fermenter. Rinse bag with water and add to primary fermenter. Top up primary fermenter with up to two to three liters, six gallons. Use tepid drinking water. Stir well using a, then use a hydrometer to measure the starting uh, specific gravity which for this is a chart here, the light body, the medium body would be 0 0.080 to 0 0.100. That's the starting specific gravity we're looking for. And then I'll be <clears throat> determined once we mix up this with the water and we test it, if we're a little heavy, we can add some water to it. So as far as water, I would recommend getting some high quality water. I use well water that goes through a whole house filter which is very clean. And I think that has a lot to do with producing high quality wine, beer, and especially wines, uh, whiskeys and, and scotch. Water has a lot to do with that, where it comes from. So I'll go ahead and get three liters of water in here, warm water. This is an Anvil stainless steel primary fermenter I got on Amazon. I'll have a link for that down below. Uh, seven gallons, it's perfect for these kits. Um, so far, I'm very happy with it, so I highly recommend it. I've added my 12 cups of warm water. Now I'm going to add my packet of bentonite.
Spits it out with some water. Top it off to the six gallon mark. Topped off the wine to six gallons with tepid water. Uh, stirred it well. Had a lid on it just to keep anything out right now. And now it's time to get our hydrometer test, our initial reading. Be very careful with these things, they break very easily. Put it in sideways like this so it hits the bottom, then tilt it. If you drop it right in, it'll break the bottom. Okay, give it a little sample here. Just a little heavy still. <clears throat> We're in a max of 1.100 and it's about 1.110. So I can add a little more water, which is good news because that means in the end more wine. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water, do some calculations, and figure out how much more water to add from six gallons to get 1.110 to 1. One zero zero. So it's recommending to get from one point one zero zero to or from one point one one zero to point one point one zero zero. You need to add half a gallon. So I'm going to add half a gallon of water. Okay, so we got our, our, water level, our water level right. We have our hydrometer reading is where we need it to be. Our starting specific gravity. The last thing we need to do is add the yeast and let it sit for two weeks. So the last step is to add the yeast. Add to the top, do not stir. Put our lid on. Know the date today is February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. So, two weeks from today, um, to be the 16th, we'll uh, put it into our secondary fermenter. The yeast is in, our lid's on, our airlock's on. We're going to wait 14 days, check the specific gravity, looking for our 0.996, it'll be our ending specific gravity, meaning that the yeast ate up all the sugar and produced the alcohol that we're looking for. And then at that point, we're going to siphon it into a secondary glass carboy, six gallon. And then um, we're going to add our pack B potassium sulfite and our pack C potassium, excuse me, potassium sulfite and potassium sorbate. Um, this took all together cleaning product, cleaning all the utensils and uh, the fermenter and actually doing it probably took 30 minutes. Actually, just putting the wine in and getting it ready took about 15 minutes. Very easy, very straightforward, you know, step A, B, C, D, E, and uh, that's it. So we're gonna let it sit at about 65 degrees for, um, for two weeks. Okay, it's been a month now. We got our Zip Dough blush ready to go. We're gonna keg half of it, and we're gonna bottle half of it. Um, this is my corny keg. I'll have uh, links to all this stuff down below if you wanna buy it. Um, this is what I'm going to keg with. So this is a corny keg. It's like a regular, you know, five gallon keg that you would have in a kegerator, but you have the ability to open it and clean it and fill it with whatever you want. Whether it's hard apple cider, beer, in this case, I'm going to use wine. I'm going to carbonate it and see how it works with, uh, having champagne on tap. <clears throat> so, um, about 14 days in, I, uh, 
transferred this from the primary fermenter into a carboy, glass carboy like this, added the uh, clarifying agents, chitosin and chiosisol, an hour apart. And then uh, two weeks later, I racked it again into another clean fermenter because um, there was a bunch of sediment still left in the, in the secondary fermenter. So just another step to clarify. Um, and now it's been about three days since then. And it's ready to, to bottle and keg it. So first I'm going to bottle everything with some, some good stuff off the top. Nice clear stuff for the bottling. <clears throat> I'll use the bottom part for the keg because even if there's sediment with this, um, the tube that this feeds up to the tap with goes all the way to the bottom. So any sediment that ends up in this is going to come out first. So if there if there is sediment, it would be seen in the first few glasses and it's gonna get clear as you go. So I'm not really worried about with that with the keg. But with the bottles, you want those clean, you know, if you're gonna be aging them or giving them away to people, you want to look nice and clear. So I'm gonna start with the top part here. I'm gonna keep my my siphon kind of towards the top so I don't get any sediment. And then fill up, I got 15 bottles. This is a 30, it's a six and a half gallon batch, so it sh should be 30 bottles. So I'm gonna do 15, which should be half. And then the rest is just gonna go right in the, into the, the corny keg. And then we put it out, put it in the keg grater. I'm gonna pressurize it. Um, so usually I need like two to three PSI to run the, the keg grater to get the beer to come out or whatever I have kegged um, or tapped. And, <clears throat> but what you can do with beer in this case, I'm gonna do it with wine, is if you bump the pressure up with beer about to 20 PSI, let it sit for two days, it'll actually carbonate the liquid. Uh, so that's a, another way, an alternative way of, of carbonating your beer as opposed to using bottling sugar and, and bottling your, your beer. So I'm gonna try that with the, the wine and see what happens. The reason I'm doing half and half is because if it does go badly, I want to at least have 15 bottles of this nice Zinfandel blush, which turned out really well. Um, and I think if it's carbonated and ice cold, it's going to be really good. So let's go ahead and start filling it up. Everything's been sanitized. I got my cork sanitized. Let's pop this off. This is a sanitizer I just kind of had running over here. So this is the... Um, siphon, and then at the end of it, it's a bottle filler. It's got a little pendulum, not a pendulum, but a little pressure valve right here. Um, so when you press down the bottom of the bottle, it'll pour. And then um, when you release, it stops. And if you, when you go down to the bottom, if you when you pull out, it actually leaves like the perfect amount of head at the top um, to look like a normal bottle of wine. So we're going to start this by putting this in here. This is a little tough at first because I have to press that while I do this. Um, it's kind of difficult. So I'm going to try to get it going here. Almost. There we go. It's a little bubbly. Bottle. There we go, get the air out. Okay, I got the bottles all filled. I'm going to prioritize corking these bottles over filling the keg up because the bottles may be aged longer, so I want to make sure that they are sealed as soon as I can. So let's go ahead and knock that out. Corker, put a cork right in here, the cylinder, grab the bottle, push it down. And you want that cork to be even with or below the top of the bottle. Otherwise, if you put the um, the heat shrink on it, it'll get all it won't look right, it won't look good. I'm gonna take my bottle filler off and just Sack the rest of this on it and then I got a gig here. There it goes. That's it. Okay, 
And so it was starting to get into some, into some sediment there. So usually I'm a quantity over quality guy, but for this, I'd like the quality to be a little bit better. Go for quality over quantity on this one. That's it. I'm gonna close this up, <clears throat> put the K grater, charge it, taste it, carbonate it. Did it. Good. Rose champagne on tap. As much as I can drink. Mm. Perfect.